And there she is. Nicely done. With the pressure of the camera and everything watching you. So, so far, we got all of the pistons ringed. They're numbered now. So, everything's good. They're all weight matched. Throwing stuff around. We're uh, stick the cam in. Uh, what else I going to say? So, there's the cam, in case anybody cares. So, that's it. Duration of 050, 224, 230, 538, 534 left. Should be a nice cam. That's the J special I allowed him to pick at. I just said, whatever, buddy. Give me what you think is great. So the one thing that you never got to see was that when we did the cam bearings, there was one of them that the block itself had been dinged up on the inside, like a dent where the material was pushed up. So when we would put the cam bearings in, it would actually bend the cam bearing up on the inside lip and then jam the cam in there and the cam wouldn't rotate so we wasted a set of cam bearings but we finally figured that out took a took a grinder and ground the inside lip off it was kind of in the middle wasn't it in the middle sort of which one was it mm, i thought it was number one was it okay yeah so anyways that's all all set now we're going to just uh, stick the pistons in it, and uh, you know, I forgot my GoPro today, so I don't have much to really, to really show you, I'm just using my phone. Yeah, that's pretty much it, right? Okay, so we're going to do this. All right, Jay, thanks for uh, working with me on here. So you want to teach me how to degree a cam? Yeah. We're so, going to degree the cam. A uh, couple reasons for degreeing a cam is, number one, you can confirm that what you bought is what you have in your hands. Uh, number two, confirm that the cam is installed where the manufacturer recommends that it's installed for optimum performance. So to do that, you need a couple tools. Um, it's not necessarily a hard procedure, but if it's not done correctly, you're just wasting your time. So you need... A degree wheel mounted on the crankshaft. Um, you need an indicator to go off the intake low. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do this. This is the gauge that I have. Um, I can show you at the end when we pull it out. But uh, you need to indicate the intake low. And then you need to indicate the piston. You don't necessarily have to use an indicator. There's a couple ways to do that. But I find the indicators one of the best ways to go. So... Um, we're going to use the intake centerline method on this. This cam is a comp cam. Uh, it is ground on 110 degree lobe angle. So we're going to degree this intake lobe to 110 degrees. And this is the stuff we're going to use to do it. Now, as you can probably tell, this engine's in process. There's only one piston in here. And I like to do that because this engine will be very easy to turn over. Um, I can very easily slowly move uh, the rotating assembly. It just makes things more accurate. The larger degree wheel. Oh, here's our buddy. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> hey, Winston. What's going on, buddy? Did you eat? <laughs> so that's Winston. That's Winston, the shop pig. Yep, new member of the family. Yep. So th this degree wheel is pretty large. I want to say this is 18 inch, maybe 24, somewhere in there. But the bigger the degree wheel, the more accurate it's going to be because you're going to be able to see your degree divisions easier than if you had, let's say, a small one, like what's up there on the wall collecting dust. So uh, first thing you have to do is you have to determine absolute top dead center. Um, that is the point where the piston travels to top dead center and but there's, there's a hiccup to it. That piston dwells at top dead center for so many degrees of crank rotation. So we need to find that absolute center of that top dead center. And that's what this indicator is gonna do. 
So first thing we need to do is rotate this piston until we get to top dead center when we see the needle moving. We're going to put that on zero and it's not even necessarily super important it's on zero, but we're going to zero that out. Now, come closer here. One thing to note is you want your wrist pin, if you could imagine it below here, is running across somewhere in here. This piston will rock in the bore. And because we're over the center of the piston, it's not going to rock. If we were to indicate off the, the edge, when this piston rocks, that indicator is going to move and that will give inaccuracies. So we want to eliminate the inaccuracies or the potential for them. And we want to indicate over that uh, wrist pin, which will basically have no pivot to it. So we get the piston to top dead center with our indicator and then we got to zero out our pointer. I use a piece of wire and we just got to get it pointing to zero. And I'm going to come in front here because I like to get down like this and look at it. Every time I look at this wheel, I'm going to, I'm going to be like this. So right there, your view is probably different, but right there we're dead on zero. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go backwards rotation counterclockwise to about 75 thousandths away from where we were zero. We're gonna go too far, like I said, about 75, and I'm gonna come back to 50 thousandths. That would be 50 thousandths, the piston 50 thousandths below the deck surface, okay? So I went backwards, now I'm coming back forward, and I'm gonna stop at 50. And this is where it's nice to have just one piston. Okay, right there. So my view right there is 50 thou. I'm looking at my wheel and I'm at, here's my zero. I'm at 10, 11, 12, a smidge over 12 degrees. Okay. Now we're going to continue rotation. And we're, that's going to come back up to top dead center right there. And then we're going to go to that same 50 point. Okay. 50 thousands below top dead center which is right there, okay? So right now, we're at the same point of 50 thousandths droop as we were before. We were 12 and a quarter here, and right here, we're 12 degrees. So as luck would have it, it's basically dead on. You want these numbers, when this piston's at the same position on each side of the, the dwell, we want that to be at the same number. So we were 12 degrees here and we were 12 degrees here. Okay. So that tells us that this is that when this is at zero, it's perfectly in the middle of the, the travel. It's at the absolute top dead center. Okay. Now you don't have to use 50 thousandths. Let's say we start over, we go counterclockwise too far. Let's say we want to go 60 thousandths, which from zero would be here, the 40, okay, there's 60. Now we're at 10, 11, 12, about 13 and a half. So let's continue and go right back to that same point. Okay, we're at the same point there. Now we check it here, zero, 10, 11, 12, 13, and a feather. So as you can see, the, the results are the same. I like to use 50 thousandths as my drop point. I don't recommend going less than 50, but like I said, the number doesn't necessarily matter. You can use 50, you can use 75. I probably wouldn't use anything more than 50 or 75, but that could be personal preference, okay? So, but all that did is that determined that when this is at zero, it's absolute top dead center, okay? Because what you'll find is that stopped moving and we're at one degree before and after, and it was about one degree after when it started to move. So there was two degrees that this crank continued to move without the piston moving. That's that dwell period. And we want to be in the middle of it. As you get longer strokes and different rods, that time changes and becomes more crucial to determine that absolute position. Okay. So that's what we did. Absolute top dead center is dialed in. So from this point on, we do not want to bump that indicator. 
for that uh, um, pointer. Got it. Okay. So now we're going to use the intake center line method. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring this number one intake lobe up to maximum lift. Okay. I zeroed it out just for giggles, but we're going to bring this up. Okay, there's 100, 200, 300, 340, 350, 360. That was 360 thousandths of lobe lift. Now your valve lift is going to be lobe lift times your rocker ratio. So this engine, I believe 1.5 is the rocker ratio. So we would take 360, multiply that by 1.5. And that would give you 540 of valve lift, if my numbers are right in my head. But for the degreeing purposes, what we need to do is get this to max lift. So I'm bringing it back around again. Okay, there's max lift. We're going to zero out this indicator. And we're basically going to do the same thing that we did with the piston. Right now, that indicator is on the top of that lobe, if you can imagine a lobe. We're going to move that lobe back a little to a certain point, 50 thousandths of an inch, and we're, we're going to take the degree reading. Then we're going to go up to the high part of the lobe and then come back down that same 50 thousandths, and we're going to find the middle of it, and that's going to tell us the center line. So we're at max lobe lift. We've zeroed out the indicator. We're going to go counterclockwise backwards till we get past 50 thousandths lift. So there's 50 and we're going to go extra because when you're going backwards, you could have slack in your chain or something like that. So you always want to be working in the normal rotation, which is clockwise. So we go too far. Now I'm going to go back forward to this 50 thousandths. Okay. Right there. Now, Get something to write on here. So we're at 50 thousandths on the back side of the ramp of the peak lift. And we're going to get our reading, okay? So zero, so we've got 64 degrees, okay? Okay, now what this is going to do, this is going to come back to max lift, which was zero, and then it's going to start going back the other way. We're going to stop it at that same point, that 50,000. So let's continue rotation. We go to zero. So right there's our max lift where we zeroed out before. And then we're going to go to 50 again. Oh, now see, I went too far. So in that case, I'm going to back up excessively too much. And I'm going to come back. I'm going to go to 50. Right there. Okay. So anytime you make a mistake, you want to go, if you have to go backwards, you need to go too far to get the backlash out of all the, the chain, if there isn't. Now we're at 130, 140, we're at like 148 degrees, okay? And most, this may seem a little confusing, but don't let the numbers get to you, most of your commercially available degree wheels will be degreed out like this. Um, from zero, it'll work back to 180 in each direction. And, and when they're built like that, what I'm showing you will never change as long as the wheels are set up that way. Just don't let the numbers confuse you too much. So what we do is we take our two degree readings. Okay. Take our... Uh, electronic device, we take 64 degrees plus 148 equals 212. And then you divide that by 2 equals. So what that 106 means is as this cam is installed with the straight up keyway, and we'll talk about that in a minute, it's at 106 degree intake center line. Our cam card shows that the lobe separation 
is intended for 110, okay? So 106, so, so let's do this. So let's go backwards. Let's get back to that max lift area. So when we bring this to max lift, right about there. Again, just like the piston, there's a dwell time where that cam is at max lift and it's still moving. But it's, it's approximately there now. And if we look, now look, it's almost dead on. It's at 90, 100, 105, 106. The peak part of that lobe is at 106 degrees, and that's what the degreeing is doing. So it's telling us they want 110 degree intake center line. We have 106. So what that means is right now, our cam is too much advanced because it's getting to peak lift at 106 when they want it at 110. So it really needed to travel four more degrees before it got to 110. So while this 106 position would work, it's what you'd call it the cam timing is advanced. So we actually need to retard this cam timing compared to what it is now. It doesn't mean it's a retarded cam timing setting. We're just matching the camshaft timing to what they want it to be. We're at 106, they want 110. So we need to shift that timing. So one thing that I always do just to verify is come back to your piston and I leave the indicators on there, okay? I'm gonna check my, my zero of my absolute top bit center pointer because if that changed, we gotta start over, something got bumped or this could have come loose or something. So we're gonna go back, we're gonna to go to the 50, and we are at 10, 11, 12, and just a hair. I'm gonna go right back to that same 50, just like we did before. Yeah, in 12 and a half. So that tells me the wheel didn't move on the crank and the pointer didn't move. So. We are at, we're confident, we're at 106 with this setting. So now we've got to change it. So how do we change it? Well, pull this off here. And when you buy a timing set, you can buy timing sets to have multiple keyways. And the set that we bought has three keyways, okay? It's got a zero key, an advanced key, and a retarded key. And when I started, I just started arbitrarily with the zero key, which is quote unquote factory timing. But because of keyway positions, crank keyway positions, camshaft keyway, um, all the grinds, the load positions, everything, there could be variables in these settings. And that's why we're degreeing it, is to eliminate them variables. So, we said that at 106, that intake max lift event happened too early. This setting is advanced, so we need to retard this camshaft timing. And this set will only allow us to either retard 4 degrees or advance four degrees. So four degrees happens to be what we're off. So we're gonna switch this uh, sprocket to the retarded position to, to make the events happen later, which should get us in at 110, which is the recommended cam center line. So we'll do that off camera. It's kind of just time consuming or whatnot. Not time consuming, but you don't really need to see. So we'll do that and then we'll check out and see where it is. Okay, so just a little quick pointer here. Um, something I like to do, we're now in the R keyway for retard. We want to retard this crankshaft to make the events happen later. We're looking to take that 106 center line and shift it to 110. So what I like to do is get the, so now that we're in the R keyway for four degrees retarded, this is our pointer. 
or our dot. Normally you just line up your dots. The R is our new dot. So I put that up at 12 o'clock. What I like to do is set the cam sprocket on there before the chain's on there and get this lined up. So I'm gonna peek in here, okay? So right there's about dot to dot. Now what I do is pull the cam gear off, put the chain on there, hey buddy. Okay, <laughs> and hold this about down. And I take this and I put it on. Okay, now you can blatantly see our dots here. Okay, so I'm gonna shift it, one tooth, still off. I'm gonna shift another, it's still off. This one should be it. Okay, now, since we pre-lined this up, it should already be lined up with the cam, okay? And of course I'm off just a feather. <laughs> but what I'm getting at is one tooth on the sprocket shifts this a lot so it would be pretty hard if you're any any bit careful it would be pretty hard to to line this up a tooth off okay so i just like to show that it's it's helpful to line that up first and uh it'll make things go together easier so we're back we've put our timing set in the retarded position now which should by the numbers retard this camshaft four degrees compared to the crank so let's go through this top set de top dead center absolute setting again uh what i do get it close visually don't spend a lot of time and i go with my pointer and i get it to zero now we're going to go back too far we're going to come to our 50. and again it Again, it should be around that 12 and some degrees, because that's what it was before. We're stopping at the same position, piston position. So 10, we're about 13, okay? So I'm going to go around and come back to that same 50. Man, I keep going too far. That's the nice thing about having one piston is this is so easy to move. Stuff isn't likely to loosen up. And you can just tap this stuff in. Okay, there's 50. Okay, so in this case, I was 13 over here, and I'm 11 here. So what you do is you take the two, you add them up, divide it in half, that's 12. So right now, while it's in that position, if I shift this to 12, that should be it. But we're not going to just guess. We're going to check it. So I'm going to start all over again. So there's my top dead center. I'm going to go back too far, come to 50, okay, I'm at 12 and a feather, go to max lift, come, uh, sorry, top dead center, come back to 50 thousandths down, okay, and look at that, 12 and a feather. So now we've got our absolute top dead center. Okay, so now if you remember, we bring this intake lobe to max lift. And this should be close to zero because that's where we set it before. Okay. So we're going to zero that out. Okay, another thing, let's go over this real quick. Another thing is, if you don't have repeatability, you got nothing. So we are checking piston movement with an indicator. We're checking uh, lobe lift with an indicator. It's got to be repeatable. So if we look at this, when I'm on base circle, I'm at about 40 thousandths on the reading. Okay? As I turn it, I'm going to go. Max lift should be zero because that's where we just set it. Right there, zero. So where should it go? At base circle, it should go back to 40. It's still at 40. Okay, when it goes to full lift, where's it gonna go? It should go to zero because that's where it went before. So let's see, max lift right there, right at zero. Now let's say that this time when I spun it around, it stopped at five grand one way or the other, or ten or whatever. My point is if it does stop at a different point, something moved. 
we're dealing with thousands of an inch in, in degrees and technical things. So if you don't have repeatability, you shouldn't be degreeing the cam because you're chasing your tail. So just like before, when we got done, we double chucked our zero, everything repeated. Okay, so that's, that's important. So anyways, let's get back to what we're doing. We've got repeatability. We brought our intake lobe on cylinder one to max lift and we zeroed out our, our indicator. I always start, like I say, going backwards first. So there's, there's my max lift, uh, 50 thousandths down from my max lift. I'm gonna go a little too far. Now we're gonna do all of our work clockwise, normal rotation. So I'm gonna stop it at 50. And that's 50 thousandths, okay? And this time, before, we were at 64 degrees. Now this number should change. Now, we are at 30, 40, 50, 60, 72. I'm gonna go ahead and call it a half, 72.5. And when you have a big degree wheel, you could say that half degree, because I can definitively say that pointer is halfway between them marks. But when you got a little wheel, you can't do that. That it's your marks are so close. Okay, so that was our first spot at 50 thousandths on the back side of the ramp. So we're gonna continue clockwise. That's gonna go back to max lift. Now it's coming down on the other side of the ramp, and we're gonna stop at 50 thousandths. Just right there. Okay. Now we are at 110, 20, 30, 40, 50, 150, 5, 6. We're gonna we're at 157. Hey buddy. <laughs> so now we're at 157 degrees. So just like before, we have 72. Plus 157 equals 229 and a half divided by 2 equals 114 and 3 quarter. We were 106 before, and now with that timing set. The one option I have to retard it, showing 114, we could round that to 115, but 114 and three quarters degree. That would be a retarded setting. So that seems to be a big jump. So we're gonna we're gonna check this again. We're gonna check this again just to make sure that something didn't happen. Okay. First thing, I'm gonna start with my piston position. Okay. Back, just check it 50 down. Zero, 10, 11, 12. Then I'm going to go back to 50. Okay, zero, 10, 11, 12. So our pointer is true. Our pointer and wheel is still true to the crank. So let's bring this load back to max lift. What this could be is this timing set might have too big of a jump for what we need. Hmm. Okay, so there's max lift. So I'm gonna, just like the piston, we're gonna go backwards, too far, come back to 50. Make sure I didn't screw up some numbers here. Okay, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, yeah, 72 and a half which is what we had before. Continue to max lobe, come back to 50,000 the other way. Right there, 20, 30, 40, 155, 157, and 157. So them numbers didn't change, so we'll double check our math. 72 and a half plus 157 
equals 229 and a half divided by 2 equals 114 and 3 quarter. So this setting is 114 and 3 quarters degrees. So let's do a visual just to make sure. We're just quadruple checking before we make any assumptions. So when this is at max load lift, so I'm going to bring this around clockwise. Right about there is where it stopped. And like I say, there's a couple degrees there. But if you look, look, we're like 114-ish. So what this is, is this, this timing set only has three keyways. The zero for standard. Or you can shift the uh, cam timing four degrees this way for retarded or this way for advanced. We went in the right direction. We went from 106, our target was 110, which would be, you know, somewhere in the middle of where we went. So we went in the right direction. We retarded the cam timing to put us closer to this 110, but the step in the set is too much. It, it went too far. It went from 106 to 114. So, <clears throat> That's eight degrees. So what that means, this set is four degrees of, this, this is affecting the cam eight degrees, which isn't what we want. So what other, cam, uh, what other timing sets are available okay. to correct the problem? That's a good question. And Sometimes this happens, sometimes it don't. This actually happened to me on a Pontiac recently. Let me grab this real quick here. Okay, so uh, this is a three keyway set, okay? Um, all we're gonna get is we're gonna get a 106 center line, we're gonna get a 114, or if we use the other keyway, we'd probably end up somewhere in the area of 100 degrees, which we really don't want that either. We'd like to be in that 110, so we got to make a decision. Either we run it at 106, which was the closest to the 110 that they're calling for, or we can go a different set, okay? This is a three-keyway set. You can get nine-keyway sets where there's actually nine keyways, and it gives you finer adjustment. Uh, they go in smaller increments. So there will be nine keyways with nine different um, zero references. And this set would allow us to dial in the timing closer to what we're looking for. Another option would be we could keep this timing set and we could go with an offset crankshaft gear. Um, or maybe even an offset camshaft gear. Um, being this is a small block Chrysler, I'm not sure if there's availability for that. So that may not be a viable option. Uh, so at this point, we got a decision to make. Do we run it at 106? Or do we absorb the cost of that and... and put in a different timing set. What are the pros that. and cons of keeping the one that we've got? Um, the pros are we've already got it. Um, it's here, it's ready to go. The cons are it is technically, uh, it's, it's four degrees advanced from what they're looking for. So what that'll do is that will promote low end and mid range and it'll take away some of the, the high higher end RPM range of the cam compared to what they wanted, okay? They want it installed at 110. If we keep this set, we can only catch 106. So it'll run. It's going to run. It's going to perform, but it's just not what they're looking for. So you could just put it in at the 106. Um, you'll have even more low end than what they are uh, suggesting. The, the con would be we can catch the 110 we want, but we have to buy a nine keyway adjustable set. This is a, a good set that we've got. 
Um, it's, a, it's a true roller type set. There's no seams in the roller. It's a double row. And it has a steel lower gear with a cast iron upper. It's, it's a good quality set. And it's sufficient for what we need. If we go to the nine keyway set, a lot of times they're available, well, just like in the picture here, they're, they're available in where both upper and lower gears are steel. They may have a Torrington bearing on them. It's a set that we don't need. As far as durability wise, we don't need that billet steel upper gear. Um, but it would give us the adjustment we need. So that's something that the customer ultimately or the builder would have to decide. Now that being said, right now, this is coming in at 106 when we use the, the standard keyway. As this motor runs and wears in, that timing set is gonna have the possibility of stretching a little bit. If it does that, it is going to retard the camshaft timing and it's gonna make, it's gonna shift that cam timing in the, in, the, in the range that we're looking for. We're looking to get to the 110, we're at 106. As it wears, it's gonna creep closer to that 110. So if I'm usually off, I like to be off where my cam events are happening too early because as it wears, the events will happen later. Now, they're not gonna change a ton, but I'm just saying it's gonna go in that direction. So, uh, for this build, uh, everything that we're looking at, I would, I would probably, ideally, I would put a set in with the nine keyword. Um, it's just the cost. A set like that's going to be Chrysler, hundred to hundred thirty, hundred forty dollars. So, if we've got that in the budget, that's probably the first choice. Dialing in at one ten, you know, as close as that'll get us. Um, and that's probably what I would look into doing. All right. Well, as as the customer and partner builder, I refer to uh, your expertise and say if the, we need another gear, we need need another gear, no, or another timing chain another set. set. Yeah, yeah, yeah because you can't. That's a, that's a good thing to say because um, you're you're going to change the whole set. You're not going to mix and match gears and and chains from different sets. Um, you need to use the three pieces right you know what i mean yeah don't mix yeah. it we we can't we can't just go and buy the nine keyway lower and throw that right right so um actually i don't even think they sell that independently to, to even be able to do that right so um it's not not really an option well first i guess we need to find out what winston thinks shoelaces are delicious buy another timing set well we have, uh, we made a mistake. He made a mistake. We made a mistake. It's late. We've been out here all day, nine hours. So, all right. So, we showed you degree in the cam, uh, intake centerline method, and our first setting on the standard keyway was 106. Quick glance at the card, uh, 110. So, we retarded the camshaft timing and found that 114 was the next position. That isn't going to work, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's my fault. Um, their recommended cam installed center line is 106. The, the 110 is the ground in lobe separation that's not changeable from the manufacturer. That's ground into the camshaft. Here's a little drawing we made. Uh, your two lobes, intake and exhaust. 110 is the separation between the two, and that's, of course, in crankshaft degrees. Now, the, the a common method is to advance the cam yeah, four degrees-ish, and that's what they've done. I didn't see the note. Um, they're looking for a 106. So the good thing is our first setting was dead on, and we can just put that back in that setting 
and we're good to go. We'll be where they want it to be. Everything will be happy. So Excellent. Yeah. It is Excellent. late. It is cold. I am tired. So, like he says, it happens. Right? Yep. Yeah, late. So, anyway, I'm going to bed. Now, I'm going home. So, thanks a lot for hanging out. Sorry we made a mistake. You guys are probably watching it going like, oh, you know, he caught it, whatever. But, yeah, we didn't until now. So, catch you next time. Where'd Winston go? Aw. Bye, Winston.